Let's talk about how you fit in your jeans. Coming up on today's video. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Justin Hebert, joined as always by Dr. Hugh Beatty. Thank you for tuning into a, another episode of Limitless Longevity. Dr. Beatty, maybe in past episodes, we would have talked about how you fit into your <laughs> physical genes. Yes. And maybe we need to lose some weight into the new year after yeah. holiday season. Uh, but we're not talking about those genes today. We're talking yeah. about the, the rise in, in popularity of genetic testing. Yes. We see it on commercials. I hear it on the radio all the time. Getting genetically tested is all of the rage. But you want to caution us that it comes with a pretty pretty stark warning. Yes, because what are you going to do with the information? To know that you have a gene defect and there's nothing out there right now ready to correct it. Now, there's, there's a book that, that my girlfriend started reading that talks about CRISPR, the technology CRISPR, how you can edit genes and things like that. But that's not what I want to talk about right now. What I want to talk about is uh, one of my patients came in this week, concierge patient, executive, very, very um, busy uh, man, and he's really pro-health. He works out con uh, consistently, he watches what he eats, he's very fit. So he wanted a genetic testing, and he asked me one day, did I offer it? And I said no. So he found one online, because he wanted to see if there were certain uh, deficiencies that his body has because of some genetic defects. Okay. And you hear all the rave now about methylation and the MTHFR gene, and, and do you have adequate amount of, of, of enzyme, the MTHFR, uh, because that's involved in methylation, and also COMP-T. And so there is a genetic, genetic labs out there that will look at you know, whether you are, are, have enough of those copies from each parent. And so uh, there's something called homozygous, that, you, that you're normal, you have copies from both parents, what we call the alleles, and then there's homozygous where you're deficient. And then there's heterozygous, copy from one parent, not from the other. So there's different levels, you know, completely reduced, very deficient in that, that particular uh, gene uh, for making that particular uh, protein. And then there's those who are, are fully, uh, re you know, have full copies of the gene. So, so he brought this information to me, and I was curious. I wanted to look at it. And, and so he went through, and, I, and two things. He was... He, um, he was homozygous reduced for MTHFR as well as COMT, C-O-M-T. And the COMT is catechol methyltransferase uh, enzyme. And, the, and that's important in, in metabolizing like estrogens, like there's cancer called the estrogens that need to get metabolized to neutroestrogens. What we talk about like 4-hydroxyesterone going over the estriol. But it also will... Um, enzymatic reaction for your catechol means norepinephrine, epinephrine. So if you are deficient in COMT, you tend to be hypertensive. But also if you're deficient in COMT, you'd be prone to bipolar. If you're deficient in COMT, you can have uh, symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome and, 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 and gut issues. And so, so as we looked at those things, some of the things were relevant to him. And I said, but here's the problem. COMT is an enzyme. I said, is it going to be an enzyme infusion for you? Are we going to give you, can you go and order COMT to be infused like I do IV therapy? No, it doesn't exist. Now, so the other thing I said, can we actually measure the amount of COMT your body makes? Because I'm quite sure you have, there's not like you are totally deficient. You don't make COMT at all. Right. Okay. So we can't measure how much COMT you have in your body because it's an enzyme. And we can't give you an infusion for it. So all we can do with that information is say, okay, you're deficient by your genetics. And so let's go ahead and say you're probably going to be deficient in making these substances that needs to be converted from one substance to another. So let's give you the things that we think. So it ended up being, so far as what he understood that they were going to tell him, is that he needed to take more methylation, more methyl products, which he already is doing, methyl B12, methylfolate. And then he brought up taking something called trimethylglycine, TMG. So I looked it up and said, yeah, trimethylglycine. And I kind of explained it to him. And I said, but trimethylglycine, let's look it up. You know, there can be problems with uh, uh, trimethylglycine too. Let's look at the side effect. And the first thing they said, be careful when somebody has high cholesterol. And he has high cholesterol. Hmm. So I said, okay. And then I was trying to explain. I said, look, then they had told him to take something called tetrahydrofolate, methyl tetrahydrofolate. And I said, well, those are methyl groups. I said, so you went from trimethylglycine, which has three methyl groups on it, which is CH3, because I was a chemistry major in college. 
to tetrahydro, methyl tetrahydrofolate, which probably has four methyl groups on it. Okay. So if you're having a problem with the three methyl groups, how much more you might have? So I said, let me do a little bit more research on it. The reason why I want to talk about this is because it just goes to show you sometimes we can have testing that really doesn't have any clinical relevance for us. Yeah. And so we're getting things done. We get all hyped up about it. But how can we really make it practical in the clinical setting? And if it's not going to change what necessarily are we going to do, other than just say, hey, I'm deficient in, in, in uh, MTHFR or COMP-T, and maybe I need to take these products, which we can't measure. We can't mm. measure your limitations and what you're not making. Yeah. We can't measure how limited you are in the enzyme, and we can't infuse the enzyme. Yeah. So what I do with the information, other than I tend to tell every woman that becomes pregnant or thinks about getting pregnant, don't take folic acid anyway, because 40% of the people are non-methylates. They have problem with MTHFR. So take methylfolate. That's better for you. So whether you can methylate or not, everyone should be taking methylfolate, methyl B12, and things like that. Okay. So as a non-chemistry person, <laughs> let me see if I can can summarize uh, the the very the very well put doctor speak. But I got to bring it down to my level. Uh, you have a patient who did some genetic testing, but in terms of trying to provide practical. Uh, application on the wellness approach to him, there's not really a lot that you can do no. based on these deficiencies. And mm -hmm. so genetic testing is good, but the but the caution really is, but does it actually create actionable insights? And the reality is sometimes it doesn't. It really just becomes useless information yes. that, hey, you, you, you have this deficiency, but we can't do anything about it. It's not going to change your treatment plan. Yeah. And so now he knows he's reducing COMP-T and reducing MTHFR. And he knows that he has trouble methylating. So what do you do? Methylate. But I've been telling the methylate before he did the genetic testing. I've been yeah. telling the methylate for mm. several years. Yeah. I tell all my patients the methylate. So it so. probably, <laughs> uh, maybe in that sense, then the the genetic test that he did mm. confirmed that he was short on these things. Yes. But it doesn't change what the the practical outcome mm. is. So it's really kind of maybe a, a waste of time and money because they'd already come to you to get mm. that diagnosis. Yes. But but the one substance told him to take the methyl tetrahydrofolate actually does impact the DNA. It helps with DNA sequencing. So I don't really know. I have to study more of that, how that taking uh, methyl tetrahydrofolate impacts the DNA, the adenine, is going to really make a difference because it's not going to correct the DNA defect. He still has reduced COMT. He still has reduced mm. MTHFR. He's not doing CRISPR, okay? Yeah. And you can look that up. That's C-R-I-S-P-R. So he kind of left with like, well, I really don't know what's going to happen there. I said, I want you to have that consultation with them. Go ahead and do it and, and come back and tell me what they recommended. And let's see if what I'm predicting is going to happen actually is going to hmm. happen. So, so really, we need to have a follow-up video and see yes. if your prediction was correct. Yes. All right. All right. So you mentioned some of the side effects of, of Comp-T, but uh, what was the other one? Methylation? Yeah, methylation. Oh, you're talking about MTHFR. MTHFR. Yeah. So what are maybe some of the, the signs or symptoms that we, we have issues with MTHFR? Well, women who get pregnant and they're told to take folic acid and they can't methylate it to actually methylfolate what the body can use. The body uses things that are methylated and it has to be in a methylated form. Hmm. And so if they can't methylate it, um, they can have a child with a neural tube defect. And that's what the, the issue is. Okay. So really, I mean, this, you know, kind of hints at, at one of our previous videos. Uh, drug companies have produced something for everybody to take, folic yes. acid. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean it's actually meant to make you healthy. There yeah. are still issues with bioavailability and, yes. and the necessity that your body needs it and how is it available for it and, and all of those sorts of things. Yeah. In general, your body can't use synthetic stuff. Yeah. It's, it's foreign to it. So folic acid is synthetic. And actually... Folic acid can cause gut issues, you, but methylfolate actually can heal the gut. Hmm. Uh, you need methylation to convert serotonin to melatonin. Uh, there's a step of, that requires methylation. So methylation is critical. I don't want to really um, uh, cause our listeners to worry, but you can actually overmethylate your DNA and cause problems. Hmm. And that's another whole concept. But most people aren't at, aren't at risk of overmethylating because they don't methylate enough. They don't do it enough. And so we can't measure. We can't even measure whether you overmethylate your DNA. Hmm. So we're, we're kind of deficient in what we can actually do and what we can actually measure. We're going in that direction of, of genetic uh, testing, but what are we going to do with the information? Yeah. So it, it sounds like uh, at least 
you know where we sat uh, sit filming this in 2024 mm -hmm. is it's really at the, the the cutting edge the leading edge of, of mm -hmm. science and wellness mm -hmm. revolution right what we know is we need to methylate right. and a lot of people don't do it enough mm -hmm. but what appropriate ranges are and what technically right. classifies as over or under is still kind of being right. discovered in this new mm -hmm. frontier yeah and this uh, young man he's in his early 40s he's very healthy and he, he's fit and so his lack of MTHFR and COMT has not done him harm. Mm. And so my thing is that continue to, to do what you're doing. He, he, you know, he works out regularly, eats right. He's very fit. He has on, he's on certain hormones that, that, that his body actually needed. He takes vitamins. He takes minerals. He drinks plenty of water. And so, you know, he's a professional. He's not limited. Yeah. So, so really, maybe the, the takeaway, the starting point for everybody is – do the five pillars. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Keep it simple. Keep it simple, right? <laughs> In the new year, commit to drinking more water. Mm. Practice your five pillars. Mm. Build that foundation of love. Dr. Beatty, it's a new year. I know we've talked about it before. We'll, we'll link it in this video. But as we wrap up, uh, let's give people these five pillars. That as they get started mm -hmm. and are, are beginning this wellness journey again, what are these five pillars they need to be aware of? First and foremost, hormone balance. Uh, the second pillar is gut health. The third one is proper nutrition, healthy nutrition. The fourth one is a good night rest, restorative sleep. And the fifth one is resistance training. And when you practice those, guess what? A lot of the magic is going to take care of itself because you've given your body exactly what it needs the way it was designed to do it. This is Dr. Beatty. I'm Justin Ebert. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you on a future video. Two things I've always considered when I see patients. If I'm trying to achieve a certain goal in them, I know that I have to test. If I don't test, I'm guessing. I always say that you can test or you can guess, but if you guess, be ready for a big mess. Regarding genetic uh, testing, one of the concerns I have is what are you gonna do with the information? Right now, there's so much information out there about different tests you can do genetically. And like I was just saying earlier in our video, the thing is, how practical is it? You get this information, what are we going to do? Is it going to change our approach to how we deal with you clinically? If it is going to have a significant impact on you clinically, then yes, definitely do that genetic testing. If not, why are we doing it? This is Dr. Hugh Beatty, The Wellness Doc.